Welcome, I'm Jeff Zwerink and I'm glad to have you here today. We're also joined by Ken Walgamuth, good friend, colleague of mine, who is a geologist, has been studying and working in the area of petroleum geology for more than three decades, and is also the founder of Solid Rock Lectures. And today we're going to be addressing and investigating the question, can the Grand Canyon be laid down in a single flood? Ken, it's good to have you here again. Well, it's so good to be here because I've been wanting to come to RTB for at least three to five years since Fuzz first invited nice, me, all right. and we finally <laughs> carved out the time and we're here and appreciate it. Well, good. Uh, we're glad to have you here. Um, I just enjoy being able to talk with a geologist as an astrophysicist. Uh, I don't understand a lot of the geology, and so it's good to have your expertise. Um, kind of to, just to set the stage, this is... Uh, in the church, there are groups of people who say the earth is young, groups of people who say the earth is old. And one of the challenges for the group who say that it's young is how do you deal with a lot of the geological features and Grand Canyon being one of them. And so my question to you is, can you do something like the Grand Canyon in a single flood over the span of a year or so? Uh it is a very reasonable question. And in fact, in the Grand Canyon, we have about 5,000 feet of sediments that on a geologic time scale were all laid down in what's called the Paleozoic period, which is the early period of when God created animal life. So this is so a what's, what's big the time frame sequence. on that roughly? This is from about 440 million years ago to about 250. Okay, so that's right, the so. that's the window of time when we have the evidence that this sequence of 5,000 feet of sediments were deposited. That's a lot of sediment. That's a way. lot of sediment. <laughs> okay, so so that's kind of what the conventional time frames would be. So what is there any evidence in there that this was part of a flood, or is it make it hard to be a part of all part of a flood? Yeah. Well. When we read the Genesis record of the flood, the consistent story is the water was rising, was rising, was rising, and was rising, and was rising continuously in sort of one big mm -hmm. sequence. And then it's falling, falling, falling as it's draining away. Okay. When we examine the sediments in the Grand Canyon, we don't see that evidence of one huge continuous continuing rising water. What we see are intervals of flooding water and then recession, and flooding water and then recession, and times when, in fact, there are limestone deposits that don't even form by floods. So limestone deposits presumably require being covered in liquid water, correct? That is correct. So why do you say they can't be part of the flood? Well, uh, as limestones are formed, think about the nature of the Great Barrier Reef in mm -hmm. Australia. Uh, it's shallow tropical water where corals and related type of calcium carbonate secreting mm -hmm. uh, organisms take that out of sea, take calcium and carbonate out of seawater and they make their shells. Those shells fall down as and deposit as limestone. So, so, so right get... in the middle of the Grand Canyon, there is several hundred feet of red wall limestone. It's that big red band that you see when you look at right. all the pictures. That's a limestone. That's not a flood deposit. It doesn't even Limestone gets gradually dissolved in water and mm -hmm. broke, broke down. It doesn't, it so, doesn't form by flooding. So, it, so this is a marine environment, shallow marine, rather calm marine environment. Right. Okay. exactly. So you know, that in and of itself, you, know, you could maybe argue that's the, after the water had stopped and it's growing or, or it's just receding. Uh, what else in there would make that difficult to say that the Grand Canyon was just a single flood event? Well, there are examples of Continental sediments, that's like lakes and rivers, there's, mm -hmm. so there's that kind of deposit. Then there are marine deposits, like okay. the red wall limestone. Then there are shallow marine deposits, and there are their successive terrestrial deposits. Okay. So terrestrial deposits, if we were having one big catastrophic event, think about the tsunami that happened in Japan. Mm -hmm. The tsunami mixed up everything. It came flooding in over the right. coastline, and it had mixed up marine and continental materials, you know, boats and houses all mixed up together. Right. Well, this, presumably the Genesis flood would have been pretty catastrophic to be able to move that amount of sediment, correct? Indeed, and if it had formed the Grand Canyon, it would be a jumbled mess of everything. That's okay. what floods do. Right. Floods mess things up in a big jumbled mm -hmm. mess. I've seen that, yeah. We have nice regular layering in the Grand Canyon. So, so there's there are kind of two things there. One is that there's an orderly and a regularity to it. Exactly. But there's also, there's a mix of marine and terrestrial environments 
that would be very difficult to get in a single flood. Yeah, it precludes the concept of, uh, and it would, it would require just miraculous intervention to miraculously move these things in ways that defy physics and chemistry and biology is, is kind of what's happened. So the very simple, blunt answer, strong answer is no, a single flood is not a, a reasonable context of forming all this sequence of sediments in the Grand Canyon.